Good afternoon. Actually, it's closer to evening because I've just gotten back from uh, Baltimore visiting and being with Holly. And uh, there are several things going on that I thought would be useful to comment about. So you can consider this a uh, sit and talk because I can't really walk outside right now. There would be no picture. Uh, I've been very concerned, as I guess many Americans are, about what's happening abroad. The day by day atrocities by the butcher of Moscow, Putin, and how we keep talking about an accounting of people, but we talk about it in the future. And day by day, people are being uh, just destroyed for no military purpose, just to intimidate by death, innocent men, women, and children, people trying to leave. And today the big story is that uh, a train station, which would allow people to leave for the Western part of Ukraine, was bombed by a missile. And we'll see more and more of these. Among the people speaking out about uh, what we're failing to do, and he doesn't say it in military terms, but he does say we're doing too little too late. And it's Mr. Vindman. You may remember him as uh, the National Security Council. And his critique of the National Security Council now is that we're doing too little too late. We're afraid to actually help Ukraine win too well or uh, Russia to do too badly. Well, that's, that, that's just nonsense. We are seeing before us an historic abomination that's only comparable to World War II. And I hesitate to make that comparison. The numbers are different and so forth. But the uh, venal spirit of hurting and killing and, and damaging people for no good reason is as close to genocide as could be. And how we define these as war crimes, these are horrendous acts. These are of biblical proportion in terms of the horrors that are being visited upon people. And we can't wait to some Nuremberg trial-like experience down the road. And if giving missiles and equipment and doing it too slowly is not enough, we have to speed it up. We have to give Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, whatever he needs. And... I think this is an opportunity. I mean, if the world doesn't act upon this, what will history write about us? Maybe we don't care. Maybe we have no shame. Maybe there's a part of us that is like Putin, that we don't have the shame of, of what it looks like for a democracy to stand by while this goes on and to say, we'll deal with it down the road. His economy will suffer. Well, you know, in Russia, he's got an 80% favorable rating. Yes, they're lying to the people and so forth, but that's not what we're saying. We keep saying, oh, the people are going to throw him out. The people are not going to throw him out. And so we should throw him out. We should march across the land and cr crush this guy because America has to stand for something and something other than jammering and yammering and talking and conversation, as Zelensky has said, and other leaders around the world. I find myself in a peculiar position because I've spent my life thinking and talking about peace and resisting war, but this is different. This is catastrophic. This cannot be ignored. Now, to turn to a better subject, a happier subject, if you will, and another historic subject, it is the elevation of Judge Jackson to the Supreme Court, and she'll be known as Justice when she replaces Breyer on the court, which is not for months yet. But what we have in this is we have, uh, for the first time since 1789, when the first act, Judiciary Act passed for the court system in America, we have a woman, a person of color, going to the Supreme Court as qualified as anyone who has ever thought to be considered for the Supreme Court, who offers us great promise for insights into the problems of this country, and hopefully in majority opinions, but certainly in dissents at the beginning of her service. It is, it is a wonderful event, and it is significant at a time when we have had such racial injustice in our system that, you know, people... Uh, look at us in a different way. And this is the kind of beacon of light. This is the kind of leading the world. And if we can lead the world as a democracy, both militarily and in our own justice system, then we're saying something to our own people and to the world about how things should be done. So those two things are magnificent. By contrast, we have the Republicans, some of whom are supporting Putin on the international level, and others walked out rather than applauded like Mitt Romney did when the approval of Judge Jackson's nomination 
was voted on in the Senate. It says a lot, and you have people making up things about her, and you have no less than Minority Leader Mitchell saying that when uh, another nomination comes up, if it comes up even in a non-election year, he's not binding himself to a promise to say that they would hold hearings. Uh, the country is not working. I do, I do celebrate Biden's efforts to do what he's done. He's done wonderful things. And I think even the session the other day with Obama was uh, terrific because I think the Affordable Care Act is a wonderful contribution. It's not the end of anything, but it was significant. And he, Obama, was prepared to bet his presidency on that being leadership that the nation wanted and needed. And it's turned out to be true. And then finally, on a personal note, uh, I, I hesitate to talk about Holly's situation because I found it's a fragile prediction. That is to say, you feel these setbacks. But we have had several days in which Holly is now breathing on her own. Uh, she is getting up out of bed and she is uh, sitting and standing and she's doing exercises. She's eating solid food again. Uh, she doesn't want them to give her air because <laughs> it makes her uncomfortable. And um, since she's no longer writing notes because they've removed the tooth, uh, tubes from her neck, she can now speak. But it is very fragile. She receives many medications. Uh, there are many measurements. There's a staff of, a, uh, of a, quite a number of people to keep track of her. So I hesitate to say, you know, we're in the clear. I, the truth is you're not in the clear even six months after such an operation. And uh, I don't profess to be an expert on surgery, although I played with the thought of becoming a doctor when I was a young man and more influenced by my scientific side. Uh, this is such an incredible operation. And uh, Holly even joked at one point, if she knew what this operation was, she wouldn't have had it. I don't believe that's true because we spent years figuring out how we could deal with her significant problem. And we knew she was going to have to walk through a wall of fire at some point. And uh, we were afraid there'd be two, of, two walls. One would be surviving enough ill her lungs, you know, capturing her and depriving her of the vitality of life as she waited for a donor. And then the other was going through this operation she's going through. But luckily, there was a contributor, a donor, who had the uh, AB, uh, well, Holly is AB uh, negative and the donor is AB positive. And it's, it's not a common type. And because of that, uh, she had an opportunity. And we don't know a lot about the donor, but it was, uh, we do know it was a 14 year old. And so the contribution of this person uh, to another, uh, at some point they had to designate that. And uh, it's such a wonderful gift that they've given Holly and she's treasured this opportunity and she's been doing her work so that she may have, as I've described it before, these golden years that this young person did not have and in a way honor that person by how she lives. So I wanna thank you people for being patient with me, my friends and uh, uh, fellow commentators and uh, you know, just uh, the group that started at the beginning of the pandemic, I suppose, when we walked the roads together and I'm gonna be doing it again. But right now I have to set my priorities, Holly, my cases and the farm. And uh, in between, I follow everything because I can't help myself, I'm an obsessive. And thank you again for all your thoughts and prayers, and kind notes and so forth. Excuse me, my vo voice is a little tired today because I, <laughs> I use it so much. You would think nothing would tire it. My mom said I was born talking, not exactly correct. So uh, good to visit with you. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.